chapter 11 and pick it up at verse 28. Matthew 11, verse 28. And this is, is one of the, the, the loveliest verses uh, in the Bible that we'll, we'll see. Uh, and as we're thinking about it, I want us to be thinking about this idea of, of, of what it means to be home. And I, I don't know what your home was, was, was like growing up. Sometimes um, home is a place that we spend our life trying to run away from it. Sorry. Um, sometimes it's a it's a place that was just a joy, um, and and actually so much of our life is is spent trying to get home, trying to make a home. And home is a place where it sh it should be a, a place where it is it is it is safe to be who you are, a place where you belong, a place where 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 you are treasured and valued. And so much of our our life we spend running through this life and we're trying to get home and and it may not be the home that we grew up in um, that actually our soul is is wired to find a deeper home and i i don't i don't know if like if you if you took a moment to think what is it in this world that i'm running away from or what is it in this world that I'm searching for and I'm looking for, but I, I just can't, I can't quite grip it. And when I think I've gripped it, it's like missed through the fingers and it just, it just seems to move. And so many of us are, are running from something, or someone. And so many of us are running, trying to find something or someone. And, and actually this, this, this life can feel like a, a race, either because we're running from or running to, but we're running and we're running and we're running, and it seems like we never get there. Either we never get away from that thing, or we never we never arrive at that thing. And so much of our life is we're just trying to get home. We're trying to get to that place where it is safe, where we do belong, where we are valued. And yet we never seem to get there. Do you know there's a, there's a verse in Genesis 4, you don't need to turn to it, um, but actually it, it describes our situation to a T, and it's the story of, of, of Cain and Abel, and after Cain has killed his brother Abel and, and, and God drives him away, um, Genesis 4.14 says this. This is Cain talking. He's talking to God. And he says, Today... You are driving me from the land. I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth. And whoever finds me will kill me. And, and, and he's saying, I, I'm about to be driven from my land. But, but, but what makes the land special is that is where God's presence is. And, and Cain is being separated from God's presence and do you see how he describes what the rest of his life will be? I'll be a restless wanderer. That he will, he will have to journey through this world, but there will be no place that is home. Because he's been driven from, from God's presence. He, he was made for this God. And he knows that as he leaves the presence of God, there is no home to find. And so he will be a restless wanderer. But not just will he be a, a restless wanderer, you know, run, walking through life. He says, and whoever finds me will kill me. Because what he understands is home is a sanctuary. To be with God in his presence is not just home. It's, it's the place of safety. It's the sanctuary. And, and it's not just that when he wanders through life, it will be aimless. Because there is nowhere else to lay his head. Is that actually out there in the big bad world, that world is going to eat him up. That world's going to be hard. You see, the, this moment, Genesis 4.14, where Cain leaves 
the presence of God. He leaves the place of safety, the place where he is belonging, the place where he is valued. And he is sent into the world to be a restless wanderer. He can look and he will look and he'll search and he will search, but he will never find what he's looking for. What he will find is a world of trouble, a world of pain, a world of hurt. And he will be a restless wanderer for the rest of his days. Today you're driving me from the land and I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth and whoever finds me will kill me. Cain knows that that day is the day that he left home and he will never return. St. Augustine, one of the heroes of the faith, said this, Our heart is restless until it rests in you. You see, we're all just trying to get home. We're all just trying to get home. And we're running from stuff. And, and, and some of us are running to stuff. But it's like we never arrive. And when we think we've run away from whatever it is that we're trying to get away from, we look over our shoulder and we think, no, it's still with me. I'm still carrying it. And, and, and when you think, well, if I, if I could just get there, then, then life would be sort of life would be happy. I'd finally be home. As soon as you get there, the horizon just, just keeps going. And we are restless wanderers going through this earth and we're all just trying to get home but we don't know where home is in fact we've never been home and we're looking for somewhere that we've never been and we don't know how to get there and we're restless wanderers walking through this earth running from and running to things. And Augustine says, we are, our hearts are restless until they rest in you. You see, this world is broken and it is tough and we are all just trying to get home. And then Jesus comes along with today's passage and he says these words that are tonic for restless wanderers and I don't know if you memorize any any words of the Bible if you've never memorized any verses in the Bible would you please start with these three Matthew 11 28 29 and 30 Because these words are tonic for the soul, for restless wonders. Let me read them. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light I don't know if you know those words really well or if that's the first time you've ever heard them but see those words those words are tonic those words are the the balm of Gilead to heal wounded souls And Jesus says, come to me and you will know rest for your souls. And just if if, if you've got those verses open, just just look at what he's saying in verse 28. He's, he's, He's offering us rest from these burdens. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. What are those burdens? And if I if if I asked you this morning, you know, I you as 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 we come in, you know, you know, you know, how's it going? What if I really asked you that? How is it going? 
What, what if the, the burdens that you carry on your shoulders were actually visible? And I could look at your shoulder and see the burdens that you carry. What would they be? Because actually life is, is full of different types of burdens. And, and, you know, Jesus isn't the only one who, who engages with burdens. Some of the religious leaders engage with burdens as well. The problem is they don't come to take the burdens. They come to put them on. You don't need to turn to it if you don't want to. But if, if, if you do, uh, Matthew 23, where Jesus has, like, he's had enough of the religious leaders. They're, they're destroying the people that they're, they're supposed to care about. And, and Matthew 23 is where Jesus just goes to town on them and says, you're, just, you're, you're killing these people. And, and he says to them in, in, in Matthew 23, verse 2, the teachers, of, there's Jesus talking, he says, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must be careful to do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do. For they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and put them on other people's shoulders. But they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. You see, these religious leaders come in and they don't, they don't, they don't want to help with the burdens. They, they want to put burdens on. Burdens that are never supposed to be on the shoulders of these people. And, and these religious leaders are filling the people with guilt and shame. And you have to do this and you have to do this. They don't even do it. And actually, so much of religion can be filled with putting burdens on people's shoulders. And Jesus says, you know, they sit in the seat of Moses. They're the respected leaders. Don't listen to them. Because they're just putting load and load and load on the shoulders of the people. Actually, Jesus is going to come along. And he's not going to put more burdens on our shoulders. Do you know what he's going to do? He's going to go to the cross. And on that cross, he is going to cry out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken? Because he will take all our guilt and all our shame. And as he hangs on that cross, that is where our burdens will be placed. All the other religious leaders are trying to put burdens on the people's shoulders. He is coming and he's saying, I'll take them on mine. Because he has broad shoulders. And all our guilt and all our shame, he takes it. He has shoulders that can carry the weight of the world. He has shoulders that can carry our guilt, my shame, and your shame. And he says, I'll take it. And on the cross, he pays for sins he deals with with our guilt and instead of putting burdens on people he takes them but guilt and shame aren't the only burdens that that that, that jesus talks about in matthew's gospel again matthew matthew 9 you can you can listen or you can flick matthew 9 verse 35 jesus uh, jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. See, this is the Jesus of compassion. And Cain knew that when he was driven from God's presence, not only was he going to be a restless wanderer, but, but, but he was going into a world that would, would, would attack him, would hurt him, would kill him. And we go into, into a world that hammers us. Our health, our relationships, our, our careers, our vocations, our families. We go into a world that hammers us and Jesus looks on the people and he has compassion on them. And he sees that we are harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And it's in, it's in that context where our passage today, Matthew 11, verse 20, it's, he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Do you know what it is to be a restless wanderer in this earth? It's searching for something that we can't find. 
It's running from something that we can never get away from. And as we wander through this earth, this, this world will hammer us. People will hammer us. Life will hammer us. And the guilt and the shame that's inside will condemn us. And Jesus says to those restless wonders, come to me. Whatever burden you carry, I will give you rest. And do you see how he's going to give us rest? And pick it up in, in verse 29. Um, he, in verse 29 of, of chapter 11, he says this, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Have you ever seen those, those timber yokes that are designed to help you carry big, big buckets of weight, big burdens? Do you know the ones that I mean? A big plank of wood that's fitted to your shoulders and, 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 and you can carry these big weights. We don't, no. I have a wheelbarrow. That's probably the closest. You know, you, you, you pick up this big wheelbarrow and it means that you can carry this brute of a weight. Um, except, you know, if you have a wheelbarrow that's, anyone ever had one of those where the, where the wheel has now lost its and it's just wobbling and, it's a, and the heavier the load is, you're just all over the place? Well, if, if, you, if your wheelbarrow isn't fit for purpose, the worst that happens is, is, is you're a mess and you can spill your load from time to time if it's particularly bad. But imagine if your yoke isn't a particularly nice yoke. It's a hard, horrible yoke. Not only are you lifting these bits of weights, but you have this horrible yoke that's tearing into your back. And Jesus says, I've got a yoke for you. And it'll help you through the mess of this life. But it's a good yoke. It's not a wobbly wheelbarrow. It's not a yoke that's going to rip your back apart. It's a good yoke. And you see what the yoke is? Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Learn from me. Do you want to know what the wheelbarrow is? What the yoke is that helps us through some of the burdens of this life? It's listening to Jesus. Because he knows what it is to walk through this world. He knows what it is to carry burdens through this world. And he says, you, you want to know some rest? Listen to me. Learn from me. And do you know, do you know why we can trust him? Because most masters that would give you a yoke to carry their weights, they're not on your side. They just want the job done. And they're like, just go and do it. And they're out to abuse their slaves or use their slaves or force their slaves actually do you know why we can listen to jesus do you know why it's safe to take his yoke on our shoulders take my yoke upon you and learn from me for i am gentle and humble in heart here's a master who's going to hand us a yoke to carry a load, not because he's abusive or dominant or wants to squeeze the last penny out of us. We can listen to him because he is gentle and humble in heart. And he, he's not given us this yoke in order that he can get a bit of work done that he's too lazy to do himself. He's giving us this yoke. He's talking to us. He's teaching us because he is gentle and humble in heart and he wants us to know what it is to have rest for our souls. He is offering the restless wanderers of this earth a chance to come home. A chance to belong, a place where it is safe to be seen, a place where you are treasured. And he says, learn from me. Take my yoke upon you. I'm not trying to trick you. I'm not trying to abuse you. I'm not trying to squeeze the last penny out of you. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me because I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This isn't a yoke that's going to tear the back off our shoulders. This is a yoke it's made for us. It's molded around us. 
And when we put that yoke on, he will give us a burden that is light. Because this isn't another religious leader who's coming to, to fill us with guilt and shame and do this and do this. And this is a Savior who is gentle and humble in heart and is a man of grace. This is a master who turns his slaves into sons. This is a master who goes after the wanderer who is restless in this earth and says it's time to come home. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I don't know if you've ever come across these verses in Scripture. Let me read them. Psalm 62, verse 5. Yes, my soul. Find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Psalm 116. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. Jeremiah 6. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. We're all just trying to get home. We are all just trying to get home. And I don't know what your home was like. And I don't know what your home is like now. It's supposed to be a sanctuary. It's supposed to be a place of safety, of belonging, where you're treasured. But in this life, so often it's not. And maybe you're running from that home. Or maybe you're searching from a new one. But there's one guarantee in this life. There is no home in this world that will give us rest for our souls. There's only one place we find that. And we're all just trying to get home, but we don't know where to look. And so we are destined to be restless wanderers walking through this world until one day home comes to us and says, come to me. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. You don't have to run from those things anymore. You don't have to run to those things anymore because you're home. You're the home in the only place that is home. I don't know when you leave here today and you drive down the street and you pass your neighbors and tomorrow you see your friends, your family, the people you work with. I don't know what you see. Do you know what I see? Restless wanderers who are carrying the burdens of this life, the burdens of guilt and shame and hurt and pain. Restless wanderers who are running from things and running to things and who will never find it and who don't have a map for where home is. I see people who are looking, people who are running. And do you know what I see? I see a map. I see a map and I, and, and I want to say, I know where it is that you're trying to get to. And it's not a place and it's not a thing. It's, it's a person. It's the person of Jesus Christ. And he is gentle and humble in heart. I don't know if you ever think, you know, when... When, when Tim comes up here and he's talking about praying and Laney for, and, and going to coffee shops and talking about people. Like, why are we even at that? 
Why are we doing that? Do you know why we're doing it? Because at some point, someone came to us and said, you are a restless wanderer and I want to take you home. And maybe it was a parent or maybe it was a stranger or maybe it was someone in the youth group or someone in in church. But someone came along to you and said, I don't want you to wander through this earth. I want you to find your home. I want you to know what it is to have rest for your souls. I want you to know what it is to take on a yoke that is easy and carry a burden that is light. You know, as I drive through Carrick, as I drive through Blaney, as I drive through RD, these are towns filled with restless wanderers, and we are all just trying to get home. Wouldn't it be amazing? Wouldn't it be a joy to say, let's get home together? I know the way. I'd love us to take a moment just in the quietness of our hearts because I can't see the burdens that are on your shoulders. But you can. But more importantly, he can. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. I'd like us to take a moment in the quietness of our own heart and remind ourselves that we get to come home to Jesus. Let's take a moment. Heavenly Father, take our guilt, take our anger, take our fear, take our sorrows, take our burdens. We lay them before Jesus. He is gentle and humble in heart. Give us that rest for our souls. Heavenly Father, we bring our friends and our family and our neighbors and our colleagues and our town and our county before you. Lord, we are a nation of restless wanderers. And we're both trying to get home and we're running away from our only true home. Father, we are the prodigals. And you stand and you wait and you look in the distance. And Jesus has come. Lord, speak to us this morning, we pray. Father, we take the burdens that our shoulders have carried. And instead we take your yoke. Father, for this yoke is easy and the burden is light. Father, this morning, give us that rest for our souls and send us out. Send us out that we may walk with the restless wanderers and we can say with a smile on our face we know the way home Lord work in us work through us and we pray this in Jesus 
but one who is gentle and humble. We pray this in his name.